Well, dear family, I have been very busy getting my facts and my bearings straight, and I got to the end of my human curiosity, following the alternative news like Epic Times, Intercessors of America, Sidney Powell, and Robert David Steele, who has kind of a rough vocabulary, so be careful there, but he has wonderful information and interviews that are very revealing. Please pray for these warriors. They broadcast the real news and are becoming a replacement for the lying mainstream media. So whenever I bury my head in the world, well, I pick up contamination. And it takes a while to get back to the sweet, gentle voice of my Lord. So I came into prayer rather sheepishly for spending days worth of time in the world. And Jesus was so quick to welcome me back. He began, I love you. He said it with such a gentle joy in his eyes. My darling, my beloved, don't you trust me? He said this in response to me complaining that I might be taken out just when things are getting wonderful in this nation. Yes, you do have your take on things, don't you? He replied. Well, Lord, you know it troubles me. I do indeed, and guess what? I've made provision for you. Do you trust me, Claire? You know that is what all questions boil down to. Trust. Simple, childlike, trust. But with the expectation of good things, I might add. Then he said it again. Do you trust me? Lord, you know I do. Then put down your stressors and take it day by day. I will let you know what you need to know when you need to know it. How's that for a twisty-turny answer, he smiled. Really good, Jesus. And we both had a little giggle. Well, here I am the next day, because I didn't get to finish that message filled up on more news, but wanting your news more than anything. Mother Elizabeth came to me and said that you told her Obama is about to make a very big move, a worldwide move. Now, you were bigger than Obama and his devil, yet I do wonder, I see it now, the election fraud is a huge tangled mess to get our eyes off of him. He is the Antichrist, by the way, and what he's been up to. Jesus answered me, exactly, and it was successful. But until the restrainer is removed, Claire, he will not get what he wants, certainly not all of what he wants. Right now he is setting up and coordinating, but the countries in question still have me as their protector. It is indeed a deep cesspool of deceit. Just then I started to get foggy-headed, which usually happens when he begins a message. And I cried out, Lord, help me. I am listening, but I don't want to go down like I usually do. Holy angels, please protect me from outside forces, shutting down my mind, causing foggy brain. Please help me. St. Michael, please come to my defense. I waited a few moments, and my mind cleared. And I said, thank you. I feel better. Please also protect my faith and confidence in hearing the Lord and get rid of interfering demons. Jesus, I love you. I do long to be with you. But I also long to do so much more and be more centered. I am helping you, my dear little one. I am here by your side, speaking with you and helping. Let go of your fears, Claire, and listen. I'm not coming to remove you just yet, okay? Wow. Well, that kind of helps. <laughs> and I have a thought that went through my head. When I make plans and want to do something, I do it in such a way that everything runs so smoothly. You know, you sit down with a pen and paper and you make your to-do list. It looks so neat and tidy. 
Of course, you don't write into it any interference or interruptions. How many of you have made a to-do list only to be thoroughly frustrated at the end of the day? Why is that? Because our minds think in clean and direct ways, but our lives seem to ricochet off one interruption or distraction or another that walks into the room just when we think everything will be so neat and orderly. We don't plan for a visitor or a phone call that might need our attention. We don't plan for maybe getting sick in the middle of the day. And we don't plan for millions of distractions that devils seem to devise to take us away from the task at hand. We plan as if we were in a safe little vacuum-sealed house, feeling great, having all we need, and staying focused. So when I ask for more time, more grace, more mercy, I'm thinking that surely I've got this, a little more time and I'll have it. It's a piece of cake, if only we had a little more time. But now looking back on my record for the past five years, I feel like I'm stuck in a constantly revolving door going nowhere, and I never seem to truly finish unless I make a supreme effort to stay focused and the angels keep the enemy away from my door. That is one reason why I used to write and play music in the wee small hours of the morning. Never any interruptions. Anyway, that was a very long thought, Lord. Sorry. Jesus continued, What you say is true, beloved, and that is why we cannot delay things indefinitely while you and others get their things done. But I'm not coming just yet. Are we clear on that? I don't think so, Jesus. <laughs> You're just yet. Could be the time it takes to go to the grocery store and back, or to the moon and back, or to Pluto and back. (laughs) He said, and that's why you can't afford to grow weary and well-doing. That is why you must continue to persevere until the very last moment. And it is coming. Just not as soon as you and others would like it to come. Oh, boy. (laughs) Jesus, you just gave us a rapture alert, and you said this was not a practice this time. Jesus, my beloved God, are you being evasive with me? I am just going to write what I hear and nothing else. It's just all too confusing. You see, usually when the Lord speaks with me, he gives me a thought and helps me put it into my own words. And then there's other times when he dictates it directly. And this is such a treacherous thing because there's so much desire wrapped up in not wanting to be raptured or wanting to be raptured that it gets in the way of my discernment. So I'm just going to listen to the words that he speaks and just write them down as I hear it. He began, There are factors that enter into the equation. There are human events, human feelings, human intellects, and humanity in general that must be considered. What is important for you to know is that it is coming very soon. But this is so huge that it should not be called because there are too many factors coming into play. So what do I do? I ask you and I show you how to be prepared, how to be ready so you will not be left behind. You already know this, so it is not a fear issue with you as much as it is with others. Beyond this, Claire, you must trust that I know what I am doing and in what sequence I will do these things. There are many variables in the equation, so it is still too soon to call. I can tell you this. You must all pray to thwart the massive move they are preparing against you. You must pray for my will to be done and the will of Satan to be thwarted. But you already know he cannot be successful until you and all the other Christians in whom my spirit dwells are removed from the earth. It is up to my Father to make that call. I am just telling you that we are getting very close to the moment of truth. And I took a break somehow at that point when I came back. Uh, I had gotten some information. One of the people here mentioned that they had heard something about another Pearl Harbor on America. And
and I was feeling very much out of the loop. So I came to the Lord and said, please speak to me. All this reports about another Pearl Harbor, what is this about? And then I received the Lord and sat with him quietly with the Blessed Sacrament exposed. After communion, I saw him and he lifted my chin face to face. And he said, I have never stopped speaking to you. Please, Lord, increase my faith so I trust what I hear. Ah, now you're getting to the heart of the matter. Did I not give you a card to the effect that these fears of yours about deception are unfounded? You did. And these are my little Rhema cards that are in file boxes. I think we have about 1,500 by now. He answered me, let's start there. Why do you suppose I asked your husband to pray for your faith? Because it is weak? he just gotten a card from the card file, pray for Claire's faith. And he answered me, the enemy has been attacking you there, bedrock, your faith in me to communicate with you. There is so much I would tell you if only you would trust what you hear. Did I not give you another card today? I am with you. You did, Lord. Then lean on me, beloved wife. Lean on the one who loves you and will support you. I am the one who is always at your side, whether you feel it or not. I am the one who is constantly praying for you, whether you hear it or not. I am the one who loves you to distraction, and I will never desert you, even when you pop up in the middle of our conversation and disappear. By the way, I would really like you to make others wait instead of making me wait, you know. Forgive me, Lord, I am so flighty and absent-minded. I will forgive you, but will you try to be more attentive, my love? I surely will. I am ever so grateful for you revealing your presence to me right now. Oh, I am ever so grateful and touched by your kindness, Lord, speaking to me. Please forgive me for taking this wonderful gift for granted. This has been so, so wrong. True, but you know what affects me more? I miss you and I'm hurt when you leave me for some foolish earthly thing. Do you know how special you are to me? How special this gift is? I think I lose track of it sometimes. Indeed you do, and that hurts me. It also cripples your communication with me, especially in hearing me. Do you see, little one, this is not a light matter. A moment ago you said to yourself, perhaps I've done something to hurt the Lord and that's why I'm having trouble seeing him. Well, that was true and from the Holy Spirit. You have hurt me, but I tell you now, I forgive you. Just be much more careful about allowing anything or anyone to interrupt our time together. Okay? Yes, Lord, I take this to heart. Thank you so much for helping me see how I have offended you and the precious graces you give me. Then I started to get fog brain, so I prayed against it. It happens every time he begins to speak to me. I ask the Blessed Mother to protect us being together, to spread her mantle over us. And now it is gone, really gone. Jesus continued, I told you, this is the work of the enemy. Now I see you've been hit in the head with one last weapon. And I say to you, you are not deceived. I am speaking to you. And he said that to me because as I was binding the demons of distraction and fog brain, I saw an angel dragging a demon off and he, the demon threw something at me and hit me in the head. The Lord said, this is how the demons silence the voices, meaning other people who receive prophetic messages. They silence the voices in just this way. If they cannot stop them dead in their tracks, 
they make them feel afraid of misleading people. But you have not misled anyone. Lord, please tell me what's going on. What is this about another Pearl Harbor that one of our people heard from another channel? Jesus answered me, It's an exaggeration. There cannot be another Pearl Harbor because your ships are scattered all over the world, not concentrated in one port. But there will be an assault on your country. How serious it is depends on how firmly you pray and persevere in prayer. You have the ability to stop this by prayer. In other words, this does not have to happen. Yes, I said that. And yes, that is true. This does not have to happen. But it will require more prayer. Pray directly against what the evil one has planned. Pray for snafus. Pray for failures. Pray for miscommunications. Pray for mechanical failures. Pray for misunderstandings. Pray for navigational errors. Pray for unfavorable weather conditions. And pray for volcanic eruptions to stop them dead in their tracks. There is so much you can pray for that will sabotage their plans. While you've been caught up in all the fraud, they are preparing an assault. It could fail. It is in your hands. I want it to fail. This attack is not my judgment on the nation. It is the enemy, yet again trying to bring down America. You, Claire, with your prayer warriors, have the ability to stop this from happening. This is not my will for you, America. I have given you a second chance. You have woken up like a sleeping giant and are fighting for your country, which will live by my rules. But the enemy is hell-bent on ruining you. Rise up and pray, prayer warriors. This attack will fail if you pray passionately against it. It does not have to be. It is not my will. Arise and fend this off with your prayers. I tell you the truth. You, my Christian people, are the restrainer, and the plots against you shall not succeed as long as you pray. So arise and pray now for what is being planned against you. Pray that your military traitors will be exposed, stripped of their duty, and arrested. Pray that plots will be intercepted and defenses will snap into place. Pray and defend your nation. This attack is not my will. And he was so adamant when he said this. And he asked me, do you feel better now? Yes, Lord, I do. I've been so out of the loop and confused about what is happening and the rapture warnings. Boy, they really threw me for a loop. I know well the difficulties you are all weighing in on. I know it is a great suffering, and I am using it. But for now, I am asking you to rally the troops and tell them to begin praying, because your country is in danger. They want to attack you when you are caught up in so much disorder. But your president is nobody's fool. He is aware. This can be stopped by your prayers. So pray, my people. Pray and make me proud of you as warriors. For devastation is not my will. And that was the end of his message. And I just want to add, I, I have another message for you, but this one took precedence, so I'm pushing it ahead, that I will be sharing a little more about what's going on and ask you to pray for certain people. Certainly back up the president, Sidney Powell Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City, and the whole Trump team, and also for... Robert David Steele. Please pray for him. Uh, X-22, by the way, is another. Robert has his own website, but since uh, YouTube just took down all his videos, years of work, um, of course, he's got a backup, but he's on BitChute, 
and that's where you'll find his videos. So God bless you, dear ones. Let's get on our knees again. We're coming out of this other mess. We're going to have the victory. We're coming out of it. But now we need to pray for what's behind it and what's coming. So please, be strong in your prayers. And remember, you can speak failure over their operations so that they do not succeed in hurting our nation. This is not God's will for us. God bless you, dear ones.